Good afternoon. Today I'm going to express my political views and principles about the United States of America's domestic policy and its foreign policy. They are very libertarian views and I believe by following these principles they will be the best for the country. There are many people who express these kind of views and I've just been inspired and motivated by them. So, I'm gonna keep this a shorter and simpler video than the last one I did. So without further ado, this is what I believe would be the best for this nation. First, I'm gonna go with the domestic policies. My political views and principles. A United States of America with loyalty to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights but for both the U and for both the US and state constitutions. A weak central government in DC that can only have limited authority in a state only with the state government's consent for a limited amount of time extensions are determined by the Fed's representatives and the state government, again with the state government's permission through legislative votes. Sovereign and independent states only loosely united by the consent of the people. States should be in charge of any matters and organize them. Freedoms and issues not mentioned in the Constitution as to the Tenth Amendment. Washington, D.C. Um, is mostly a place where the president resides along with Congress. Re state represent representatives and senators from all 50 states and the Supreme Court. Any bill passed by Congress and signed by the president must be voted by the state legislature and signed by the governor. No fed bill should be legal in any state unless it is passed and signed by the state legislature and government. States decide issues that deal with communities, taxes, education, roads, etc. When it comes to individuals, clients in healthcare, local businesses, farmers, then it should be a matter between groups of farmers or unions of a local agricultural area. States should have their own departments, for example, immigration, agriculture, education, borders, transportation, etc. These loyal depart state depart these local state departments can organize and enforce laws which work best for their office. Those laws can be different in any state. Every state is different. State representatives who run for Congress should be elected by popular vote and also by the legislative vote, in my opinion. State senators who vote for Congress should be elected by the state legislatures. Local counties should organize roads, education, hospitals, etc can ask help from the state government, but only with the legislature and by the people's popular vote consent. Cities can pass laws by their councils and by popular votes on issues that affect their cities and people. Should be for the best of the city and not for the private interests. Again, cities can organize their own police, fire stations, have their own building zoning laws within their own jurisdictions. City, county, and state governments cannot build on people's private property without the property owner's consent, buy land from the owner, imminent domain is illegal. Same goes for feds. Allow the free markets to work, allow free but fair competition between businesses of all types. Limit corporate mergers, respect to businesses private property, allow partnerships between businessmen along with advising employees of businesses. Employees can come and go as they please. Employers and individual employees can decide different salary rates. 
have money backed by gold and silver along with competing currencies as a means of exchange. More chance of people having money based on value and of avoiding poverty. This limits inflation and manipulation by banks. And the Federal Reserve. Give power of coining money back to the Treasury and Congress. Every state should have its own gold and precious metal reserves. Regulate the stock market. Ensure no manipulation or corruption is done in Wall Street. Keep eternal vigilance on the banks and ensure they treat their clients' money with respect. Leave their money alone. Limit militarization of police and other security forces. Again, this should be a state issue. Only have military bases with the state government and people's consent. Can close them if the state government and people want to. And now this is more towards the foreign policy. A call to reform U.S. foreign policy. Whereas American military personnel are being killed and wounded and civilian casualties inflicted in wars fought for purposes unrelated to America's vital security interests, which the U.S. government defines too broadly. Whereas America's military interventions in other countries have led to costly blowback and unintended consequences. Whereas outdated Cold War alliances create tripwires that could compel the use of U.S. military force to resolve conflicts. Whereas escalating tensions between the U.S. and other nuclear powers are moving our nations toward military confrontation and potential nuclear war. Whereas erosion of civil liberties long held dear by Americans, including freedom from warrantless surveillance, searches and seizures, has accelerated with passage of the USA Patriot Act in 2001, the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, and the USA Freedom Act of 2015. Whereas, in a Cold War era, the US can safely reduce its security budget by developing a new and more relevant strategy for right-sizing the military to better deal with 21st century security needs. And whereas, a healthy US economy is critical to an effective security program, but is now put at risk by the trillion dollar annual national security budget that contributes to a 21 trillion plus national debt. Therefore, be it resolved that the government of the United States should immediately begin a transition to a foreign policy that includes, number one, rejecting the role of policemen of the world, seizing military and covert intervention in the affairs of foreign countries, and using military force only when absolutely necessary to protect U.S. sovereignty, territory, and vital interests, narrowly defined. Two, substantially reducing the more than 700 U.S. military installations in 150 countries around the world. Three, curtailing the bloated military budget, allowing resources to be redirected towards cutting the deficit, cutting taxes, investing in America, or any other use as Americans see fit. As of 2018, the budget towards funding the military, the military spending bill, will be $717 billion. <clears throat> Number four, reducing the size of the U.S. nuclear arsenal to a minimum deterrence level and fully supporting the implementation of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Five, emphasizing diplomacy, law, and cooperation in international relations and dispute resolution. Six, upholding civil liberties guaranteed by the Constitution. And seven, running in executive military action, recognizing that war powers reside solely in the legislative branch. And also, I believe that we should talk, trade, and do business with other countries freely and stay out of entangling alliances and not try to intervene neither militarily or politically in the matters of other nations. Well, that's what I've had to say. This is what I truly believe in. And I believe if we can adopt 
these kind uh, of these kind of policies then we can have a much better much better not just United States but a much better world as well as countries will again look to the United States as a beacon of hope liberty and prosperity and not a country that is seen to intervene in the matters of other nations so that's all for today and I hope you enjoyed this video I'll make more in the future and Remember, liberty, peace, and prosperity are what we should be looking for today in this world.